at the age of 12, opening for Bob Marley in New York. And there's, there's some things I think people will, will be happy to learn, including things about Jim as well, through the interviews that we've done. And, uh, and that's one of the one of the most wonderful things for me, that in the experience of getting to know a little bit better, because we've known each other for probably 30 years now. And yeah, I didn't date anybody. But yeah, this just had an incredible career and met some phenomenal people. This, and you'll find out more later. But tonight, we're just going to celebrate and uh, enjoy some music by Lib. And thanks for coming out. Somebody make some noise. Come on, you guys. Oh, wow. It is, I'm very honored to be here. Um, I'm glad to be here. I'm happy to be here. And uh, we're documenting everything. So that's really kind of cool. I think that's important because a lot of the times, being in the Jim Heinemann knows, I was doing jazz, we were all doing everything. Everybody was hustling, all different kinds of music. That's what we did, and we worked together. There was no stigmas or anything like that. You played, you played good, you got to play with each other. So um, I was open to that. I came to Toronto um, when somebody told me in Peterborough that, we don't hate you because you're black, we hate you because you're black and adopted. So I was like, okay. So I went home and asked, and they said, yes, you are. And I said, okay, I'm leaving. And I came to my sister's house in Toronto, and I wrote uh, this song about that experience, something called 304 Cottonwood Drive.
Thanks for my adoptive parents. They put up with a lot of stuff. The next song I'm gonna sing is a song um, I wrote. And um, my son was actually playing the tracks in the middle of the night. And I woke up in the morning and I said, that's my song. He goes, okay, well, we can have it. And now he's working for Drake. So he's doing his own thing. But um, it, it's, at the time I was single. I was a single mother. And you know, everybody wants a little love in their life. And sometimes when you're an enter entertainer and you're popular, it's very hard to find someone that can genuinely connect with you. Because it's a spiritual thing musically and it's a creative thing and then you have all this popularity in me that's all sweet and dandy but i have a purpose with my music i have a purpose with my life through my music so to find somebody is a hard thing to do so anyway so i wrote this song it's called all in my mind and what it's about is manifesting what you want right you can call it praying you can call it spiritual connection it's all of that so um there's three things about manifesting that you should know because god took time with all the colors of the rainbow and the flowers and everything be very specific about you want about what you want when you're manifesting you know you say i want a man and this shows up hey what's up <laughs> you know what i mean so be specific i have rules the first rule is you know um does he love god does he love the creators you know does he have that thing that that tick inside him that teaches him who he is second thing is um, do, do you know his family has he introduced you if he doesn't have a family do you feel like family doesn't feel like that there's that connection and the third one which is like the deal breaker for me is does he have his two front teeth I'm, I'm just saying I'm just saying you know the cameras are clicking both brother so and that's a joke you know but um, so this song is something called All In My Mind. I performed it all over the world. I ended up in Florida before a smooth jazz cruise with, with uh, Smokey. And um, they introduced me as Liberty Silver. And this is the number one song pirated in the USA. Yeah, what a proud wow. moment that was. And Art Kelly was there. And when I got on stage, he goes, I should have wrote that song. I said, yeah, but you didn't. So, okay. so here we go. Something called All In My Mind. Here we go.
Now everybody go sing ornithology. Everybody know ornithology? All the teachers stand at the corner, waiting for the dudes to get off the sleigh, so they can holler, what you know, baby? I got a cattle if you want to ride. Hey, you will look so pretty by my side. I'll take you where you want to be, as long as you've got the bread. There's nothing left to be said. Come on. So run across the street and get your paycheck. And I'll be waiting here till you make a bag. I couldn't leave if I wanted to. I'm out of gas, baby, it's up to you. Be bop and swing is all I ever do, except for maybe loving you. And on the is my truth. <laughs> Jazz ain't easy. That's like high arithmetic, that one. The bird, Charlie Parker. How high is you? Oh, yeah. Well, music? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or in space. Yeah. <laughs> it's full of satellites now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So this is a song that I wrote when I was uh, 13, maybe. Maybe. No, actually, it was probably around 11. And I also did a version of this with John T. Davis. I love John T. Hey, little man. <laughs> he was just, oh, it's exciting. And he had these big white teeth. And I always loved working with him. It was always fun. And, and Jim Heineman, too, because we did a lot of different CBC shows and R&B shows, just all different kind of shows playing together, small clubs back then. Everybody, all the musicians worked together. There was no competition. It was like families, you know what I mean? Different groups of families. So I wrote this song when I was young because I was concerned about the earth. I had seen this documentary sitting with my parents and they, were, they ended up killing some wolves and it upset me and I went into the room and I kind of thought about what's the world going to be when I grow up. So this is a song called See Deeper Ahead. Oh, mm -hmm. 